a moving plant that hides from predators when it feels their touch. A little legume that goes to sleep when the sun goes down. A smart perennial that has learned to be less shy the more it's exposed. A role model for most of us, this is the Mimosa pudica. Hey, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Floralogic. Today, we're talking about our favorite kind of plant, plants that move. We've talked about carnivorous plants before. They move to catch prey, but today's species moves for an even more relatable reason. It doesn't like to be touched. At the mere hint of a caress, they fold their leaves inward, as if they were bracing for impact. They're called Mimosa pudica, but nope. They're not named after an ingredient in your favorite Sunday brunch beverage. The cocktail is named after an Australian yellow flower, also called mimosa. The mimosa we're talking about is native to Central and South America, though it's been introduced to every other continent except Antarctica. Its name comes from the Greek mimos, which means mimic, as in they mimic the movement of animals, and pudica, which means shy. And their name is well earned. These plants will only open up when they're feeling pretty good. They'll close immediately if something touches them, if it's too hot, too cold, or if its stem is being shaken. This is not just run-of-the-mill coyness. This is actually a very effective self-defense technique against their two main worries in life, dehydration and being eaten by a vegetarian. Most of their range provides enough rain to keep them hydrated, but it's also in the tropics where the sun can evaporate the moisture of unprotected plants. If the mimosa pudica senses it's too hot out, they'll close their leaves to prevent the water from evaporating. And while other plants have thorns or chemicals to deter herbivores, these guys just hide from them as much as they can. Turning their leaves inward makes them look more like a twig and a lot less appetizing than other leaves. And of course, to an animal, a moving plant seems sketchy at best, especially because one closing leaf can start a chain reaction that makes several hundreds of leaves close simultaneously. So, no thanks. Better leave it alone and eat literally anything else. If you see one outside, go ahead and tickle it. See it move. Just don't overdo it. It has huge energetic costs and can even affect their photosynthesis. Which brings us to the question, how does it move? Like other moving plants, such as Venus flytraps, they have an elaborate mechanism that changes their cell size by adding or removing water. It's kind of like holding a sheet of paper between two air balloons. If you deflate one slightly, the angle of the sheet of paper changes. This mechanism is also activated at night when the plant goes to sleep. There's no reason to be open if there's no sunlight to absorb. And as we mentioned earlier, it's a lot safer. Not all mimosa pudicas live in the same environment, and some are touched more than others, usually by harmless objects like droplets of water and passing animals, so they've evolved to learn when to close. Sensitive plants need to maximize the time they're open, so in areas where they're touched a lot, they learn to be less sensitive. This also happens in areas with low light, as they need to absorb all the light they can get. This makes sense. But the tricky part is, where do they store the information they learn? There are a couple of theories, one of which posits that the frequency a plant is touched changes the way their genes are expressed. But again, it hasn't been proven. If you're a grad student looking for a research subject, consider helping us understand how plants learn. Unfortunately for Mimosa pudica, some animals are catching on to their ruse and finding ways to eat them. Silk-weaving predators are their worst enemy, as they use their threads to immobilize their prey. A classic Spider-Man move. Spider mites and mimosa worms, which are really steel-gray moth larvae, are their main predators. Both are difficult to control and can quickly kill a plant. So if you have them at home, make sure to keep an eye on them for parasites. So what should I talk about next? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. Bye.
If you're a grad student looking for a subject, looking for a thought, if you're a grad student looking for a research subject, why not consider, why consider helping us learn how, consider helping us understand how plants learn. Okay. If you're a grad student, are you? Are you in school? Are you getting good grades? Are you studying? Are you doing your homework? Then use this as your topic for your dissertation. Get a PhD, go to school, learn, get a degree. Put your degree in a frame, hang it on the wall. Let everyone see that you graduated and that you did a dissertation on learning how to plants learn. And then email me and let me know about it. Thank you. If you're a grad student looking for a research subject, consider helping us understand how plants learn. Ready? If you're a grad student looking for a research subject, considering <laughs> if you're a grad okay. If you're a grad student looking for a research subject, consider helping us understand how plants learn. Toot toot.